Who's a good girl? Who's a good girl? That's a good baby. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you like the boat? The wind in your hair? All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Driveway Engineer. I am JR, and this is my Toyota 1988 4Runner, uh, diesel swapped with a Mercedes OM617. It had a uh, head gasket failure, maybe because I put too much boost in it, maybe because I was drunk and didn't tighten the bolts, I don't really know. But uh, that's been resolved now we're going back together with some upgrades and some stuff that I wanted to do all along. Some stuff that I wanted to improve. Some stuff that I screwed up. Some stuff that some of you wanted to see me do that I don't really care about, like this intercooler. Um, but I wanted you guys to see, right now, I want you to see my bumper situation. So this is the orientation, but backwards. That is the face of my bumper that faces my frame. So those lower four bolts go here and here. And then those upper two bolts went here. There was one, actually, bolt, um, I believe. I might be wrong. I don't remember. Anyway, I cut these off because somebody told me that this Skyline radiator was the perfect radiator and would fit perfectly and drop in like a glove. And I wound up cutting my whole core support out to try to accommodate it. That is mostly my fault. You know, like, obviously I could have cut my losses, sold it, whatever. I chose to do this, but uh, I'm trying to rectify that now. So I have a 89 and 94 whatever core support to patch it in here, and uh, I want to fix this. This cross member is not super strong, probably stronger than, like, most, like an S10 or a Ranger. But uh, it's just sheet metal. It's probably, like, 14 gauge. Um... To start with and then having it with the bolts just on that plane it would have just tipped that right down whenever I hooked a winch to it so I cut this out on my plasma table this little brace um, and bent it so that I can put this back in and I've obviously ground this up a little bit and uh, now I'm ready to weld it in I wanted you guys to see it before I welded it in um, and then I'll move on and show you what I did with the intercooler and everything else. So we'll be back. All right, so with that thing welded on there, you can kind of see, see how the bumper sits up and that's so that you can run over stuff at a better angle, better approach angle. But see how I didn't have that upper brace. So with a winch sitting up here, I would have just pulled it right down. Um, this is a trail gear little bumperette deal, and I'm actually, whenever I fix the core support, someday I'm gonna come in here and put sides and, and wings and fill it out. That day is not today. Um, right now I'm gonna go ahead and put the rest of the Doomsday Serpentine kit back on, and uh, that way I can go ahead and throw the core support on. So, we'll throw it on. By throw it on, I mean trim it for four hours and weld it back in, but you know, Slap her in there. I'll be back. All right. Uh, serpentine setup's back on there. Intercooler's still just sitting there. This is also just sitting there. Um, it does give you an idea of how much I cut out, which seems absurd now. In hindsight, um, trying to think of how I want to deal with this and I'm starting to think that I might just want to actually zip these body mount bolts out cut this bracket off drill it off drill the spot welds out chisel it off um, and trim this around the headlight buckets and shove the whole thing on there is kind of what I'm leaning towards doing right this second uh, yeah yeah, that would get me all new everything. So, kind of thinking I might do that. It's also occurred to me that I can have a hood latch back now um, when I'm done with all this. Not with that hood, but with another hood. 
I can have a normal hood latch and a prop rod again, which would be cool. So, yeah, I think I'm going to pull the horn off and these headlight buckets and I think I'm going to cut these brackets off and, and shove this whole thing on. And by shove it on, I mean literally overlap the new headlight buckets with the old, like that panel. Uh, it won't hurt a thing. If anything, it'll make her a little stronger. Then I can just go around and give her a few little tackaroos and uh, I'll have a front end again. So I'll bring you guys back when I take the headlight buckets off here. All right, so as I often do, I changed my mind. Um, went in and drilled out all the spot welds on the replacement panel and took the brace and the mount off that. And that'll allow me to be a lot more generous with my cut and my overlap um, because I can slide up behind those mounts and then I can cut and fit my new brace that was on this panel to the underside of here. I don't feel like I have to have to do that, but I'm going to. Um, you see the inner fender is welded on under here. I don't want to get into all of that. So, um, but I don't have a problem with like butting up to right here and same on the other side. So, um, yeah, I'm going to cut basically like right around here off and jam it in there. So I'll be right back. All right, so that brings us to where I'm likely to stop for the day. Um, this is trimmed off, if you can't see back there. I'm trying to line that hole up with that hole, and it seems like they're in the same spot on both based on these spot welds, um, which leaves that hole to line up with that hole. And I've kind of suspected the whole thing did this when I opened it up, and it looks like that is a correct assumption. Um, because if I line that up, that doesn't line up. So, I'm going to go home and eat tacos. Uh, intercooler is working out great. Even though it looks like a jungle gym of confusion and chaos. Uh, you see I have it sitting up on those bolts. I'm going to have to put something on it so it doesn't rub a hole through. But, uh, we're making progress, so... I'll bring you guys back when I figure something out here. All right, next day working on this. Uh, on the driver's side, I got really good fit up. Um, you see that this hole in the new one is way bigger than this one, but the overall shape is good and it seems like it's gonna be fine. I, like, I'm not going for perfection here, I'm going for good enough to hold the thing together from doing this and hold my radiator in. Um, on this side, on the passenger side though, the shape is just wildly different. Um, so there's a hole back there that I've been trying to line up and that's okay, but right here around that square that's all different compared to what I have here um, so what I'm gonna do I went to Sunday school if that eye offends thee I'm gonna cut that entire raised portion out uh, like here here down here it's gonna cut her out and uh, go from there All right, so I fitted this side up, trimmed it out, wound up with a hole right here, whatever, no big deal. But on this side, you can see what I've been afraid of the whole time, how far off that is. I can tell by, the, well, I suspected from the hood gaps to the fenders that the, the whole thing was open. Um, and this is what I wanted to, part of what I wanted to correct by doing this, so, uh, I'm gonna get a ratchet strap and try to pull that together one way or another, see what I can come up with. I mean, I don't need a lot, but, and it was there once, it should wanna go there again. The body mount, I've listened to body mount bolts up, so hopefully that'll help. Uh, I'm gonna get that rigged up though and 
see what I can come up with. Alright, so you can kind of see where this is going now. Um, the section I cut out, I pulled it together, I screwed it with tech screws. Um, I'm going to weld it. I don't know if I'm going to weld it today. I have concerns about my radiator. I guess I'll have to have a pusher fan. Um, if you don't know, pushers are not as efficient as pullers, and they're specific. So I happen to know that there's a ton of Mercedes and BMWs that have beefy, beefy pushers for uh, their evaporators, so they have better AC. But uh, looking down here, like there's not a ton of room for a fan there. So uh, also, the outlet that I have doesn't match. This is a stock 22R radiator. I'm not gonna use it. Um, I might use it. I don't know, I have to think about it. They say it won't work, but I don't know. But anyway, the outlets on this, I think they're inch and three eighths, but that's close enough to inch and a half for me. But the outlet I have there, I think is inch and three quarter. Um, regardless, that, that flex hose does not fit. So, um, I'll have to consider that. Think about what I'm doing here. But yeah, I can tuck my harness up, I can put a hood latch on, so that's all cool. My front end isn't falling apart. It's just a matter of figuring out radiators and fans at this point. This bottom brace I'm gonna put on as well. I just kind of set it up here. Um, I'm gonna cut it right where these spot welds were because that's it looks like I cut right up against the body mount. Coconut lost some attention. So I'll probably cut that and tack it in there and then leave my cut core support out. This will get zip tied up. This hole worked out well. What are you talking about? You wanna get down? That hole worked out well so that I could uh, run my wires through it on that side and then, whoo, that was way too far. Yeah, I can just zip tie them up and uh, protect the jaggedy end, so. Happy with that. Um, you see I knocked the headlights out when I was screwing around with the screwing around with the ratchet straps, but it's starting to come together as a whole vehicle again. Um, I think I'm gonna leave it there for today. I'm pretty happy with the progress I've made. So I would like to get this thing in driving shape. There is a car show at the Ionia County Fairgrounds on August 12th, I believe. I posted it in the Facebook group. I plan to be there. I would like to be there with a running Toyota and a running Dodge at a minimum. So we'll see. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching. Hopefully you guys had a good weekend and uh, we'll see you next time on The Driveway Engineer. So. That is it uh, for this little episode. I'm not real sure <laughs> at the moment, and I've been drinking to be entirely transparent, but I don't know why I thought it would be a great idea to take space away from myself while jamming more things in here. But uh, it does look nicer at a glance. Um, it's not perfect, and that's okay for what it is. Something I'm gonna take in the woods and probably hit a tree or scrape a tree or whatever but it's nice and sturdy um i need to paint the brace that i put on below and i don't have any black paint to brush on i like when i say rust-oleum i almost always mean brush on uh i don't have any to brush on right now and that's okay i kind of moved on to working on my power layout um that'll be another video as will cutting a hole in the hood and making a duct to shove air over that intercooler. If you're not aware, by the way, A, I know that that's not the best place for the intercooler. B, uh, lots of factory vehicles have them there, like factory diesel 4Runners, uh, factory diesel Land Cruisers, WRXs.
and they move them when they can because it's better but I can't I don't have space so it is what it is um, but yeah that's it this is a kind of project that anybody can do um, you know you might have something a little different but you, you can make a repair like if I had some 2009 Ford Fusion that got smashed in the front this is exactly how I'd repair it when I fix my in-law smashed truck this is exactly how I'm gonna repair it and I'm gonna hang a grill on it and nobody's ever gonna know right and, and for what we're doing it'll be fine so uh, thanks for watching we'll see you next time on the driveway engineer hope you had a good fourth and uh, we'll see you